So I really like what's going on in Western Europe right now. This could be the fall of France potentially, uh, as well as we might see a new great team arise in that region. Now, it's still very much not a guarantee that Napoleon will fall here. I mean, even Troyes is going to be a little bit tougher uh, for Isabella to take over tours because, well, I mean, she's going to have she's going to lose a uh, Spanish conquistador. She's going to be here with a really, really old unit, which I don't know is is Spain that far behind technology because I don't know. Why do they still have warriors? They might have been screwed and they maybe that never got a hold of iron, but still there's no excuse for that. Well, they've got a rifleman. I just I guess they just haven't upgraded their sp their warriors or something. I I don't know. Anyways, um they they're still going to have trouble here, especially if they start to get distracted by other French cities before they take over Troyes. And I don't think that Paris will fall. Um I believe that Switzerland is also involved in this war, so unless Switzerland starts to really rush in after the capital, I don't think that it will fall, but we'll see. It would be it's kind of a necessity that someone forms a power here in Western Europe because there are powers everywhere else. We've got powers in North Africa, obviously with Songhai and the Vandals. We've got the Egyptians who are doing really well. And actually, the Egyptians are invading the Middle East. Uh, that might be a little bit tough, obviously, because Ron al-Rashid has a lot of troops here. And they'll be trying to kick back Ramses back on his side of the Red Sea. So uh, they're also at war with the Umayyad, but the Umayyad are too busy. I think they're focused on something else that's going on up here. What do we see from the Huns? The Huns are being extremely aggressive as they move north towards the Caspian Sea and uh, towards the eastern part of the Black Sea. I mean, the Huns are going to be good. This whole region is starting to really fill out, even though the border gore is still really bad. Let's also not forget that the Goths are still taking on uh, Austrian Hungary, the Austrian Hungary uh, alliance. And Greece is coming here to bring in reinforcements, but they're not coming as fast as maybe they should be. Uh, Let's not make a joke about that because uh, I, I already know that someone was going to make a joke about that. Uh, okay, so here comes the Egyptian uh, an Egyptian settler. Uh, probably in this small space here, which will really complicate things for the Europeans if if Ramses is able to settle right here. I mean, he, he might. I don't know if that's what he's going for. No one has settled Iceland just yet, so that could be uh, a necessity for some of the AIs. I'm actually really surprised that Iceland hasn't been settled. Okay, so what do we see? We see Troy's with what? Multiple, they're going to have multiple crossbowmen. Actually, one, two, only like two crossbowmen attacks. Not sure if uh, England, I'm sorry, if Egypt is involved in the war against uh, France. I don't know if Egypt's, because, you know, France and Hittites are together. So I, I don't know. This pikeman's going to need to come across, and, you know, having an embarked range unit like this, Spain's not going to really be able to do much with that. More riflemen are on their way. Switzerland and Sweden have peaced out. Okay. And uh, how has the Brit uh, the British pretty much have given up, I think. Though they do have a few redcoats nearby. Oh, I mean, they, they're trying. They're still trying. But I think Paris is too high. That, that, that combat defense, that city defense, 48 defense. I mean, that's a lot. Even though, you know, London is at 58. Are they located on a hill? No. I wonder why. Maybe they have a, a, a better defensive building that they've built up. That's pretty high compared to most of these other zones. Although Europe, let's keep in mind that Europe is not the strongest point in, in the map. I'd say actually outside of Europe, usually, or just outside or just on the perimeter of Europe or another continent. Let's go to the next turn. How are the Goths handling this? Again, once again, they're just kind of holding things back. Uh, the, the Goths have definitely expressed inf interest in uh, sieging out Budapest, but right now there's still Hungarian troops here. There's still a few more musket men. So maybe Spain, it's weird because Spain has riflemen, but they still have warriors that they haven't upgraded. Spain actually might be on one of the top uh, technology civs in the game, but they just haven't been upgrading. Ooh, man, that Hunnic goth war, I think, is going to start up soon. Well, there's open borders. There's an open borders agreement, clearly. But that will be huge. That will be kind of dictate the game right there. When the Huns, when Russia, when the goths... Whatever conflict breaks out, I think I've mentioned that before, there will be a big, big conflict here in Eastern Europe, and that will, I think, dictate the game. Who's going to win? Whoever kind of comes out on top. The Huns really need a lot of help here because they don't really have the best team member. Bavaria is, is not very strong, obviously, so it's just kind of the Huns by themselves. But it's still kind of interesting to see. Ooh, okay, so Troy's falls next turn, it looks like. Yep, and then Ramses is going to settle right there between Tours and Troyes. That is going to be complicated. 
That is going to be very, very complicated. Ramses is playing against somebody. Oh, I can click through the single player score list. I had no idea I could do that. Oh, uh, excuse me, Lithuania. That was the leader there. Okay, Lithuania. Well, that's pretty far away from you. So, but that's that's fine. Who's attacking this French city? Maybe the Caravel was formally attacking it, then they went after it or something. I don't know. Either way, this city is done. They have two range attacks and two melee attacks. That's game over. So, uh, for sure, France will be down to four continental cities, uh, but the, I, I did forget about this city. Unless they, they j must have just settled this because it's only a two population. Bam! Spain has grabbed their second French city. We have the Netherlands and Portugal piecing out. Portugal needs to be worried now, and the Moors need to be worried. Uh, again, Iberia is a very interesting place with the addition of the Moors. I've got to make sure that I include them uh, in the future because, I mean, obviously only on European maps because on a world map, you know, Iberia is way too small. But still, this really added a lot to Iberia. And I don't think we're even coming close. We're even close to the point where we've seen the results of having three sieves in this landmass. Uh, for one, you know, the Moors are really weak right now. But if the Moors and the Portuguese work together on a kind of a less powerful I, Isabella at the moment. I mean, they might have some luck. You never know. What is this telling us? I don't know. I don't know what that is telling us. What's going on here? Isabella's is playing against Poland. I completely forgot that Poland's still alive, honestly. Okay, so Paris is down into the yellow. There are only a few more French troops left to defend their capital. There's a uh, weakened musketeer. Two weakened musketeers and a crossbowman located inside of the city. I guess Switzerland isn't involved in this war because Switzerland hasn't been moving deeper inside of uh, French territory. They probably were. I know that Switzerland was facing the uh, uh, the Danish threat to the north. There's kind of a big threat there. So is Bavaria at one point. There's there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of trying like a lot of power grabbing right now going on in Europe. It's it's been so long since we've seen. Oh man. If Spain could just uh, provide some reinforcements, they might be able to do this. The problem is that I believe the British are going to run out of troops before they can take over Paris. They need some sort of additional help somehow. Maybe Spain. That's maybe, maybe that's what Spain is doing. What is Egypt doing now? Maybe they are. I think they might be going for Iceland or or southern. <gasps> Who is that? Is that the British or is that Denmark? I don't know. I'm having Burgundy and and Brown too close. Okay, that's a British settler. We still don't know. They could be going for Iceland, too. I keep forgetting about that. Alexander is plotting against Bohemia. Okay, that's smart, because Bohemia is right here. That's actually an okay city. Moving north and getting closer towards Hungary. Uh, okay, there seems to be a slight, um, a slight kind of hole in the Hungarian defense. Hungary still has troops here, and obviously Austria will defend them, but uh, the Goths are going in for the attack. And again, it is exclusively the Goths because the Greeks, I don't know if, they, if they're if they just losing military units or what because they really only have naval units at this point. At this point, that's really all they have. I mean, Greece has a few you know units here and there. They're not really going after Austria, though. That's the weird part. Okay, we're going to have to see what happens. I don't see this being a success. I don't think this is going to be a success for the Goths. There's just no way. And honest, and for the Austria's sake, this absolutely cannot be a successful siege. Their team member losing their their capital, one of two cities that Hungary has at the moment, that'd be devastating to the Austrian Hungarian Empire. It, it would never be the same. Right now, they're okay. They can somewhat hold up against the Goths and the Greeks, but barely, very barely. Okay, what's going on? So Paris is back in the yellow. Um, I don't know if the British have moved their troops just yet. Still, they've got, geez, two, three, cro uh, four crossbowmen attacks and a melee unit nearby. You'd think they'd be able to handle this very easily. You know what? They might have taken the turn off to destroy Musketeer. I think that's what they did because now there's only one and it's in the red. So that is kind of what I'm thinking here. Lots of money from Victoria. Victoria has a lot of money. So there's Novgorod, the Moors, the Sumer. Remember, look at this. The Sumer are one of the only members, one of the only kind of sieves in the game that they don't have a team member. They are doing really, really well. That's the first time we've seen something like that. The Sumer are actually a little bit better than the uh, Assyrian Milan team. 
alliance, I guess you could say. So, I mean, they're not doing that great, but still, the fact that they're by themselves and they only have, like, three cities, one, two, three, it's just very surprising. And they have a huge military, too. Clearly, a lot of battles going on between Arabia and Egypt. Arabia is kind of the one Civ that's holding back Egypt from kind of dominating the Middle East, because I'm pretty sure they would. Although, Arabia's not that powerful themselves. I don't really know how they're stopping... Well, as soon as the Egyptians get a stronger foothold in uh, the Arabian Peninsula, I think that's it. I think that that would be that'd be the, the end, pretty much. Uh, I see the hunts going after. That's who the hunts were going after. I was confused for a second there. So Bulgaria will be destroyed, and Attila will be getting a lot of diplomatic penalties for destroying that sieve. Mm -hmm. Paris still in the yellow. But they did... Oh, France. Where did those two musketeers come from? They might have instant healed one, or maybe I was blind and just didn't see the other. It could have been built in Paris. Paris probably has some pretty good production. Either way, it's very unlikely. I, I doubt we'll see... Yeah, that, that right there is kind of it. They destroyed one cross, crossbowman. You know, the, the redcoat's not even that powerful. So unless Spain keeps attacking, which I don't think they will... I think Spain is done for now, unless maybe Spain wants this city for some reason. Boom, Bulgaria has fallen. Bulgaria is over. They're done. Greece has now declared war. Greece and the Goths have now declared war on Sweden and Lithuania. If I'm remembering that team correctly, I believe I am. Yes. But there's, well, let's see. That's kind of an interesting war that they just declared. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, there is a coalition that's forming. I see. Well, luckily for the Greeks and the Goths, nobody nobody along that immediate border was declared. Uh-oh. Okay, wait a second. Things are getting pretty confusing here. Uh, I see one war. One thing that pops out in my mind is the uh, Danish-Scottish war, war versus Sweden and Lithuania. Obviously, obviously, Lithuania can't help Sweden at all in this situation. But remember, Denmark was already involved in a second war. They are moving their troops down south. They're going to have to bring their troops back. Well, I don't know if they had been destroyed or what, but they're already along kind of northern continental Europe. They're going to need to move them all the way through Co Copenhagen. Sweden's not in a bad situation. Thing is, Scotland, too. Scotland might be more of a threat than Denmark would be. Kids to sign our dele delegates. Uh, banning of dyes. And yes, I'm just trying to repeal city-states. So, Sungai and the Vandals, that means nothing to the Greece, the Greeks and the Goths. Um, to be honest, what are the British going to do at this point here? against Sweden, so I don't think that's a big deal. The Sweden's going to lose a few troops in the North Sea, but that's about it. Uh, the British and the Spanish going to war against the Greeks, Greeks and the Goths, nothing. The Assyrians and Milan, that's nothing. And Sweden, Lithuania, again, kind of nothing, even though Lithuania, they do border the Goths, so that could complicate some things. The Goths are already kind of squeezing down a little bit. Who attacked this city? I don't know. Uh, also, who lost a team member? It was Arabia, right? Yes, Arabia lost Bulgaria, so Arabia is now on their own. We now have two Middle Eastern civs with no alliances. That is kind of a more big deal. The Romans and the Papal State. That is a much bigger deal. Okay, so things are going to get really interesting. Scottish Denmark. That Okay, so we've got a lot of civs outside declaring war. A lot of civs now declaring war in Russia. Boom! The Huns and Russia in Novgorod. We also see Austria-Hungary working together against Russia and Novgorod, but that doesn't mean anything. And then right after that, the Huns declare war on Greece and the Goths, obviously. Wombo combo. So, this is probably not the best scenario that Attila could have gotten himself into. This is not a very good scenario at all for himself to get into. Uh, Poland now. Poland, Prussia going to be going after Lithuania. They both don't really have any troops, so I don't think we're going to see any results from that. Uh, yeah, you know, Attila, you probably, you're going to lose this city, I think. I don't think you're going to be able to defend this city. We could see even, maybe this might reverse and be the fall of the Huns, to be honest. That is possible. And this is it. The world's going to really test the Greek and Goth power. Um, I think Russia and Novgorod will be fine. The Huns declared war on both the Goths and Russia, essentially, and that really messed their strategy up, I think. That's going to really hurt them. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter what if, if, that passed, if that passed or not. 
French still have not pieced out. We need to keep an eye on Scandinavia because Sweden, they do have a lot of troops, and I think that maybe uh, they, they, they might be a little bit underestimated here, slightly underestimated. I know Lithuania is not very strong, but the Goths are, I mean, the Greeks are fine. I think either way, but the Greeks are going to be more concerned with the Roman attack. Wow. This is actually a almost, this is pretty much a continental war. If you want to think of this map as like a world, then it would be definitely a world war. We've got the Huns attacking, but you know what? The Russians will slow down the Hun, the Hunnic uh, aggressiveness here. They probably won't take anything more than just that city. The Goths have a few ships, and I don't think anyone has open borders through Constantinople, so the Greeks won't be able to help defend. That would be very helpful if they did. Um, who is... Who are the... There we go, Wil William. Okay, so Netherlands. The Armenians and the Netherlands. And they actually are at war with somebody that I think I disregarded. I think they they could be in an interesting situation. Russia moving through Novgorod territory. Sweden still has to deal with a lot of troops, a lot of Scottish troops. Norway might even get involved if Norway's team member is okay with that. But I don't, I don't know if they are or not. Maybe, maybe not. Yep, there is Novgorod. This is, this is it. I'm sorry. There's yeah, Novgorod, Russia. This is it. They're trying to take out the number one team. Manchester has been founded. Paris still in the yellow. So this war is over. I think. Is this city going down? Ooh, that city is going down a little bit, but I don't know if they're going to be able to take it over. Spain needs to watch out because I think that Portugal is starting to raise a military again. And since Portugal is more... Well, I don't know. I mean, they're not that powerful, but still. We need to watch out for the Italian Peninsula. This could be huge. Greece losing these... I mean, it's not really that big, but, but for geography reasons, uh, Rome attaining... Uh, re I guess retaining Sicily as well as I think is this Malta or something I don't think it is but I think this is something like that uh, these two islands going in in the control of, of Augustus would be a big deal if Augustus gained control of those two islands how's Egypt and Arabia Arabia still hasn't taken back and pushed the Egyptians out of the Arabian Peninsula just yet do we see anything else the Huns will take this city but then they need to watch out for the Russians Oh, that's right. They're going to—they're going after Bavaria too. So Bavaria will be down to just Munich, exclusively Munich. The Goths absolutely need to peace out with uh, Austria and Hungary. That's kind of crucial here. Also, Argos—they need to watch out because Argos is going to be—I I think the Pope is going to attack Argos, and they can't really get to the. There's going to be a few battles going on here. There's going to be a pretty big naval battle going on in the. Uh, southern part of the Italian peninsula. That will be pretty big, I think. Turn 255. Do we see? How's Lithuania doing? <laughs> Lithuania is kind of holding back. They're not going too far forward. The Huns are probably going to lose this city too. Wow. Yeah, we are definitely in the middle of a world war. Bam, Rome has taken the first city over from Greece. Um... I don't know if this is going to be the collapse of a power here or what, but uh, we will definitely be seeing some changes here on the, uh, the horizon. Maybe in the next video, who knows. But uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys. Let's see. I just want to see Scandinavia really quick. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.